good evening. This is Aaron with Bowtie Treasures. I'm so happy to be here tonight. Maybe grab a friend, let them know we're here. And tonight we're going to be working on this uh, really fun project behind me. And I'm excited to show you what I have planned for it. Uh, three colors tonight. I was mainly working with two. I've already painted the project behind me French linen. And I'm actually painting this bed for a customer that bought a previous project that I, did, that I actually painted with Dixie Bell on, or on Dixie Bell's Facebook page. And let me show you that real quick so you have a little bit of context. This is the project that I'm referring to tonight. This French provincial dresser we did, I don't know, maybe a month or so ago. And uh, on this project, we used Dixie Bell's uh, stencils with the French uh, quote, and then also used the, uh, what is that called? The Harlequin uh, stencil as well. So we did two different stencils on this piece. The dark text script we did in mix Mason Dixon Gray and the Harlequin we did in Sandbar. So those two colors. So the client who purchased this asked if I would uh, paint a couple other pieces for them. So they have they found this bed, which is gorgeous. And uh, they've asked me to paint this bed to match that dresser. And I thought, well, that sounds like a great challenge. So it's one of those things, if you paint furniture and sell it, always be ready to to use that same technique on something else. I have a nightstand I need to do, and I'll probably pull out the stencils on the nightstand, but we're not gonna do that on this piece. My focus here is just to accentuate the decorative elements on here. And the two ways I'm gonna do that, one is with shading, and I've demonstrated that a lot, and I think it's gonna work really well. In fact, in just a minute, I'll show you some progress I made. And then two, we're gonna be highlighting the details. I, I think it's gonna to come together really well to use the sandbar to highlight the details and I'll show you that. Uh, so let me show you where we're at on the progress. I'm gonna bring my camera in a little bit. So this section right here, you can see that, like for example, if you look at the middle, nothing has been done on this side, but over on the left, I started introducing the Mason Dixon gray shading and then also using sandbar to highlight the decorative elements. Without that sandbar, it would still feel pretty flat so this is the look I'm going for for the whole piece and you can see, even see on the back on the footboard it's got a really great decorative corners so if we have time we'll get to, we'll get as much done as we can tonight but I wanted to show you this was pretty much my tr practice corner just to make sure I had everything technique wise down and so I want to do tonight to continue this technique and show you how I did that and we'll work to this to this side and then when we get most of this done we'll, we'll work on the footboard too which is really beautiful as well okay. technique wise some things that you'll want to have handy I'll have a damp rag I've got a couple here just something that you can use to wipe off any any areas that need to be fixed or to get paint off of raised surfaces I also have some craft brushes. If you go to my website, bowtietreasures.com under shop, I have an Amazon page and I have things like these craft brushes in there. You can get a good set like that, but just give you, get you some br uh, brushes, especially something that allows you to apply the paint. And then the star of the show probably tonight will be Dixie Bill's French tip. This French tip, the nice thing about it that I like, one, it's a natural bristle. It's got a uh, tapered edge and it comes to a little bit of a point. Now over time they, they can wear out, so, but they're so affordable. This is a great brush for working in details. So those, those two things are really key to making this work. The next thing you want to have is uh, a mister bottle. Dixie Bill's mister bottle is a continuous spray and um, this will work well. I like to use one that I can do a little bit a different type of spray but just, just have a misting bottle uh, handy so that you can work on that so I'm just uh, giving you guys an idea of what I'm going to be working on a little brush and my French tip my craft brush and then I'm going to go ahead and go in with our Mason Dixon gray now if in case you can't tell the Mason Dixon gray is a cooler tone French linen has a little bit of a warm tone so they complement each other really well and all I'm doing at this point is just bringing a nice soft edge to it. 
Now, also let me let me let you know that I did not, I have not top coated um, this piece. So I'll do that when I'm all said and done. So let's pull you in a little bit. I'll do my best to keep you guys uh, along with a good view of what I'm, what I'm doing. So first thing I'm gonna do is we'll just work along the side. This part right here, I'm probably not gonna do too much. It's a little tough to get in there. So we may not work too much on that live, but I wanna work here and then around. I'm not putting anything in the middle. If this was, uh, I wasn't trying to match their piece, I might even recommend maybe some kind of uh, blending or highlight in the middle, but it's all about the details in this piece. So let's keep, let's keep that going. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm going to put my paint down is get a little bit of paint on my craft brush and I'm just going to put it around the edges so that I can use my French tip to soften it up. This is where I'm going to keep my other my rag handy. I like to once in a while when I'm working is just wipe off any excess. But what you're looking to do, keep your misting bottle handy is soften this edge basically fade it vignette it you don't want a hard line so this is i'm just accentuating the details and, and that little bit of work is right there now it might look a little odd while you're working because the water from the mister might affect how you see it i will tell you that if you're experimenting with colors, I don't recommend that you do too much of this. I would, I would suggest doing a section like I did today, do a section and then let it dry and make sure you're happy with it before you do the whole piece. Because for example, I needed to know how dark it was going to dry. It did, and as expected, it dried a little darker than I expected. But this is the color I wanted to use because it matches the French Provincial dresser I did. And so far, it's working well. Now, one thing I did notice that I wanted to do is control how much paint I applied. So you might change the size of your brush depending on how much you want. For example, if I were using this size, I was gonna, I would put a probably a half inch of paint. And this one was pushing me at about a quarter of an inch. So you, you wanna think about how much paint do you wanna put down? And again, sometimes you don't know exactly how it's gonna work out until you let it dry. My brush is very, very, very lightly or slightly damp. I used it earlier. Here's where I'm gonna wipe off a little bit because I don't want too much paint going down. So this is what I typically call shading. Okay, so just apply a little bit of paint You'll find that once in a while you'll have to remist. The mist typically dries, you know, starts getting soaked in by the paint. But this is going to create a really soft glow, depending on what value the paint is. If it was, in other words, if I was using sandbar right now, it would be feel more like a glow than a shadow. So when I say shading, usually I'm dar going darker than the color I previously painted. You can do this technique, I will tell you because of experience, you can do this technique with Voodoo Gel Stain. You can also do it with, with glaze. But the nice thing about this technique is that I can do it with chalk paint. And right now I am shading with Mason Dixon Gray. So I'm looking, so you just wanna look for places that would naturally be a shadow or a darker area. But I will say, once you work on an area, try not to go back too much because you don't want to re-mist a shaded area. Those speckles of water will start to mess up the shading work you did. Now here's where I would come in with my rag and wipe off any extra excess paint that maybe my French tip would have put somewhere that I didn't want. And we're gonna come back later and we're going to paint this with sandbar. So again, you may not see the full benefit of that shading till everything's dry and everything's settled down. So we're just gonna keep going. Mist it first and then come in with the color. And think about shadows. Like 
You almost could even use the shadows that my light's causing. Oops, sorry. Just a little bit of paint. I might, I might go back and repaint and redo the left side because I felt like at the end of the, after I finished it, that I had put too much paint down. So I'll have to evaluate that later. It wouldn't be too much work for me to go in and kind of touch up and redo the left side. Last night I demonstrated on my Facebook page how to really put down a thin coat of paint so it looks silky smooth. So if you're interested in smooth coats of paint, you might want to go back and watch my live from last night. Now in here on this corner, I put it all in the crevices. So again, we're talking about shading here. So anywhere I could put the, I'm gonna bring out my a larger brush here because I wanna cover most of this. So if you wanna get into the details, just push the paint into all the cracks and then have your wet rag handy and wipe off anything that you didn't find was in the right place. So this is a little different than the other parts that we just did a moment ago. Okay, so I'm gonna take my rag now and wipe off all the high points, leaving the darker color in the shadows, in the crevices of the piece. Because I'm gonna come back in just a moment. Let's look at a bristle or something right there, it's weird. So you can see that that color stayed in there and that's great. That's perfectly fine. I don't have to come, you don't have to come back with a highlight color, but to me, the shading alone is not providing the depth that I want. So this is going to be just a very nice, classy, soft piece when we're done. Let's work down. Let's keep going down this piece. So the next space is in, is in here. And I'm going to go ahead and switch to a slightly larger crap brush just because it's going to help me do a larger area. So I missed it. And what I'll do, do you see how I'm getting into the cracks there? What I'll do is, if we can, I'm going to come back and show you the detail work with sandbar on this piece before we get to the other piece, just so to give you a kind of a A, uh, man, I can think of the words tonight. <clears throat> Global view of how the whole process will look. Now I've got a broken piece here. I uh, could I repaired it, maybe, but it wasn't. This piece wasn't meant to be perfect. It's got some people do like to have some of the story still be told, if you will. Now here's where I'm gonna take the wet rag and I'm gonna wipe off any of the highlights. And so you can see how it kind of faded out and then I went down the side. I need to adjust my light one second. So you have to determine, do you want to do the cracks as well? And I did on the other side, so let me do that real quick. Just run a bead down that inside area. Now the French tip is probably gonna put some paint where you don't want it at times, and that's fine. Just use your wet rag to wipe it off. So as long as you're working wet, you're gonna find that uh, this technique can really do a great job for you. The thing I like the most about the shading technique is that I can use any Dixie Belle paint color that I want and kind of get that same, what we might, people might use for wax. So right here, I kind of could tell that because I sprayed, I got some mist in there. I'm getting a little spots. That's what I was warning you about. Okay, let me pull you back because I'm gonna go to the very bottom. So I'm gonna do right here real quick, just working my way down. 
I don't know that it's, you, you have to decide for your piece how far down or how in depth you want to go. So I'm just kind of softening that up. For example, I think it makes sense to go across, but I'm not exactly sure other than the fact uh, why they left. They didn't decorate this section other than the fact that this is about where the mattress would be. So I'm not sure that it, that makes sense to really shade right there, but I did shade down below. So let me do that real quick. Trying to do my camera. So let me mist here. And I'm trying to match the other side. Just showing you all the steps that I did on the other piece. Get that in there, get the paint on there, and then shade it away. Okay, so just work quickly. And then use the French tip to do the heavy lifting of fading, softening, blending. Have your rag, rag handy so you can wipe off anything that didn't quite work out. Like I can see one right here. One thing I need to clean up there. Sometimes it's harder to explain what I'm doing than just to have you see it, but I'm doing my best to explain kind of what I'm going through, feeling, seeing. Okay. Once in a while, like I can see a little bit of water. Just be careful with the rag you're using to wipe off excess water because you might have some um, paint on that or glaze or whatever you're working on. So you can see the Mason Dixon gray faded in there. Let's do what I would say is the next step. And got to remember which brush I used. Okay, my craft brushes, I, I just threw in some into a bucket of water, but this is the brush I want to use to show you how I did the details. Let me show you now what I did next on the other side. So this is sandbar. So this is the third color that completes the, comp the uh, color palette for the dresser I did. All and Sometimes I might, and if you remember last week, we demonstrated how to dry brush and I was kind of dragging sideways. I want this to be a little bit of a crisper highlight. Now, if I wasn't trying to match the dresser I already did, I might come in here with gilding wax, like some metallics, but my dresser, except for the hardware, did not have any metallic. So I thought, what other way to highlight than to use the sandbar that I used with the Harlequin pattern that I showed on the dresser at the beginning of the live. But look how well that starts accenting. So this is where uh, using a nice flat craft brush will give me a crisp, and I'm just hitting the edge, okay? That's the nice thing about a flat. Could I use my finger? Yes, and in fact, I'll show you in a minute if I can get to it, how I use my finger to fade. So I'm just using sandbar right now. The nice thing about sandbar, it's not white and it'll dry and it complements the French linen so well. But without this technique right here, I still feel like the piece would be too flat. And once I decided to do this today on the other side, I thought, that's it, that's what I gotta do. This is where I did a little bit more fading. So I hit the edges and then I just kind of faded out, almost like it had been worn out over time. And maybe this is where I use my finger just to kind of drag it up the scroll part. So laying more paint down the bottom. And then as you get to the top, the nice thing about the finger on this is that it's a soft touch as opposed to me dragging a brush 
up the decorative part. But I'm gonna go back and hit this corner just to kind of, and then rub it. See if I can't uh, just accentuate this. And I would do the same thing with like a gilt gold gilding wax. Now that's gonna dry, uh, right now the light's catching it a little wet. It's gonna dry a little darker and it won't be as strong as that, but it'll still be better than not having it. So I have my brush very flat right now, not a lot of paint, and I'm just trying to stay on the top edge of that detail. This is the same technique I'm gonna do on the footboard but it has way more detail than this does. And the reason being is, of course, as you walk into the room, it's the first thing you see. So this is where, okay, it looks like on the other side, I actually took the paint up. So I'm just hitting the same edge. And then just go back and clean it up. I'll finish this other part later. I want to show you how I handled down below. One thing I do like, you see this little, I don't know what this is called, but I want to make this pop around all of this French, not French, Mason Dixon Gray. So this is where I'm going to use my finger. I'm going to put it on there. Maybe after about an inch or two, I'm just going to go ahead and use my finger and just kind of paint that to a fade. So same idea, about an inch and a half, two inches. Leave some paint on there and then just lightly fade it out. So you can see how now that pops amongst that Mason Dixon gray really well. On the left side up here, I put some about right there about the same width, oh. and then using my finger, faded it out on both sides, and that was it. Rather than, rather than painting the entire scroll all the way around, that just gave me a little bit of a, kind of just almost like it, it's worn out a little bit. Do some right there, and fade it out on both sides, so like a rainbow. Oh. Messed up right there. Let's see if I can clean that off. Just in time. Just little touches. So that's how I shaded, and then that's how I highlighted. And then on the other side, as you, you can see, the two sides are now ma matching. This is dry, so it, it's not as highlighted, but it's coming together. And let's work on this uh, side of the bed to show you how that's going to bring out the details. So uh, same principle is I want to shade and I want to highlight. So there's a lot more to highlight here. So let's focus this on this corner and we'll use this as a test piece. The back side is not as detailed, but this whole corner has a lot of detail. So we want to take this all the way across with it. So we're basically kind of repeating a little bit of what we did earlier. Mist. And then we'll put some paint on there. Thinking about shading. So I'm putting it heavier underneath the top decorative scroll area. That's what I'm doing. And don't get too far ahead of your, of, of your misting. If you misted, the spray bottle, you don't really want to put any paint down where you haven't missed it because it'll want to start drying on you and you need it to stay workable. Go back to my French tip brush where I'm going to give it one more mist. You need that water so you can soften those edges. I 
have to keep an eye on the bed because it wants to, there's nothing really holding it up except a small little wood stool on the back side. Here's where you would want to take like your wet rag and wipe off any excess paint, like on the scrolls and raised areas that you don't want to have any paint. Let's keep going down below. So I usually work fairly quickly just to try and stay ahead of all the misted areas and the water. I don't want to put any shading where I don't have to, so just focusing on some of the areas right now that shading makes the most sense. But there's so many details down here, it's like, where do I stop? I'm curious, has any, have any of you tried this method before? I know I've demonstrated it before, so it might not be new to everybody. But I'm curious if you've tried it or something like it. Hopefully the concept makes sense to you. If you have to let a section thoroughly dry so that you don't mess it up like with a misting bottle, then go to the other side of the bed and come back when this is a little further dry. That kind of thing is always fine. You're gonna, you'll get a hang of what you can do and how long it takes. But you can already see that how well that's, um, that shading's working. And we'll do the same thing with sandbar where we'll come back and highlight uh, those sections. So let's work on this lower scroll. Sometimes I'll use this for darker areas like underneath. Um, so here, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and paint all of it knowing that I'm going to wipe off anything that I don't use. So I only put one coat of, oh, let me back up real quick. I did clean this with white lightning and put one coat of boss on it because it is an older piece. It might be good to do two coats, but regardless, um, I only put one coat of French linen on here and it went on so beautifully, partly, partially because the values club, what I'm already doing. Part of my paint starting to dry. I don't, you don't want anything drying on you like that. Okay, now I'm gonna come back with the rag and we'll wipe off anywhere I don't want to have French linen, or uh, Mason Dixon Gray. It's just easier to wipe off the excess than it is to not paint there. Just I think you'll understand that as, as you do it. So any of the areas that doesn't make sense, just wipe it off. I am not wiping any paint, I'm not wiping any of the French linen off, I'm just wiping off the Mason Dixon Gray. And now what you can do, wipe your French linen brush off and just do a soft, just kind of soften any of those wipe marks and those let me bring you in real quick, see if you can tell where the French, so you can see where it has a little bit of, um, well, that's actually wet, but it's hard to see. Like right there, I wiped off, I wiped off in here, but all the other areas, it still has the Mason Dixon Gray. What a, what a great look that provides. So we'll keep going. Let me work on the foot. Try and pull you in as close as my camera and my seat will let you. Let's work on this, this part of the foot. So like I said before, the undersides of things, I'll usually leave that darker, kind of like we're causing the eyes and the, the, the value to recede. So there's no reason for me to have French linen necessarily showing here. And it kind of makes it um, just sit back further uh, in value. Okay, so here I might just do like up there and not try and get all the way down. I'm looking for darker shadow areas. So just pushing color in all the crevices I can. Remembering that I'm going to be able to use the French tip brush to blend all that around. Okay, so we'll just stop right there. I gotta put my camera where you guys. All right, 
So we have the paint there. Now I'm just going to use the French tip and soften it around. If you've been watching for the last few minutes, you probably know what's next. And that is take out the rag and wipe off anything, I, any paint I don't want. This is so I can still keep a raised or accented highlight before I do sandbar. So if you can, because it's wet, it might be a little hard to see, but the raised surfaces no longer have Mason Dixon gray. So you could stop there, but the sandbar, in my opinion, is gonna take it to the next level. But that left the dark shadows with Mason Dixon Gray. That's how you add depth to a piece. All right, so sandbar is next. Or again, almost, just go right into my sandbar. And now I'm just going to hit the highlight again. Trying to be careful, have a nice, clean, crisp edges so they don't look messy. I don't want this, I don't want any of this to feel messy or rushed. And uh, doing this will make it feel a little bit more purposeful. Classy might be another word I use. If you can't do this, steady. This is popping really well and it's popping especially since it's wet. Um, when this dries, it'll dry a little darker. It won't be at, it won't scream as loud. Right now it's kind of a little much maybe, but you could always switch to a different color if you don't want that much highlight. Or don't do the highlight, right? So one of the things I try to do when I come live is to show you all how I achieve a certain look and then when I post the finish, finished pics, you guys have it inside uh, view of how I accomplished it so rarely am I doing anything that you guys aren't seeing in one of my lives either on my personal on my Bowtie Facebook page or here on Dixie Bell so most all my pieces are on it done. that's kind of the process that I would take all the way across this bed. So it might take me, you know, a few more hours to finish the detail like this, but once you kind of zone in, uh, normally what I would do is I'll get all my shading done first. I'm just breaking it up so you guys can see a little bit more of a sectional demonstration, if you will. Do you have to paint it this way and get all these details? No, there's other ways, but this is the way that gives me a little bit of control. And maybe you have a creative way you like to do it, that's fine too. But uh, I am closer to this piece right now than, except for maybe the person sleeping in the bed. Here's where I would probably use my finger to spade it out. But you shouldn't stress this kind of detail level, but you don't want to make it look like you didn't care, and it was well done. So sometimes I will fade it out. You can see right there, I didn't like the finish at all. You just have to look at each section and decide how you want to do that, what makes sense to you. So here, it might fade up. So once again, there are a lot of ways to achieve this. Like I said, maybe if I wasn't trying to match the dresser, I would go maybe with metallics. And just so that we are on the same page, here's the piece that I did a, a little bit ago with y'all and that's what I'm trying to make this bed match with. So using the same colors. forward to continuing this process on this piece 
Thank you so much for watching tonight. I'd love for you to use that link that I've put in the comments. And if you need to, don't hesitate to send me a message or leave a question in the live here tonight, and we'll get to it as soon as we can. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Aaron with Bowtie Treasures, content creator for Dixie Bell. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic weekend. Stay creative and be awesome. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.